We're going sailing on Night Runner. Memo's Woo! boat. It should be a hell of a trip because it's blowing and that boat rips. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a bunch of water on the inside of this lens. So pardon the droplets, but I'm being whisked away and stolen from editing, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be sailing. We have another two weeks until our haul out. Garrett says he found the guy to clean the bottom. Scheduled it for tomorrow. Our final preparation before we pretty this girl back up is to clean her belly and free her from the sea floor. A wet ride into the marina, we find Night Runner, a 42-foot, cold-molded, one-of-a-kind, Bob Perry design, built for speed. Hello, cutie pie. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, nice good to, to see, see you. Since we're essentially killing time, we couldn't not take you sailing on this truly unique vessel. Built in Port Townsend, Washington in 1980, she is multiple layers of red cedar. She's classic up top, but totally modern under the waterline, which has won her countless races, a single-handed transpack, and she survived Cape Horn. Now under her new captain, our good friend Memo. Right there. Yeah. He sailed her down from Washington State with his family to her new home here in Mexico. With a wife and two kids, she's a family boat now and well-loved. Life fills her cabin with children's laughter and the smell of a fresh-caught meal. She's cozy and sails like a dream, a thoroughbred on the water. Night Runner has quite the following, and I believe her new owners will do her justice. I take my favorite seat at the bow and look aft in awe. To be aboard a boat with such a pedigree is a pleasure. Let's see her fly. As I walk her decks and step over her spinnaker pole that's as big as our mizzen mast, I try and imagine her in the roaring 40s and what it must have been like. Can you take advantage that I have through? Yeah. So, yeah. put the main. Yeah. That way you really have your hand. Right here. No, this one. This one. Oh, that's the main sheet. Right? Okay. So I will point it to the wind and uh, you want one all my winch handles. No, no, no. Why are you telling me where the reefs are? I thought we're gonna No, go. because we need to free them to go all the way out. Oh, oh, oh I see. You're giving me a reef. Well, I yeah. think like, okay, we're gonna reef. It's only 20 knots. You have one way so channel good, there. Right? Night Runner is a master of wind and waves. Red Aviva can look up to. Memo has added a few things for cruising comfort, and I really want Garrett to build something like this on Red Aviva. What a perfect view. Once at the helm, I didn't want to leave. It's an oddly natural feeling, and I love the difference between designs. Like the difference between an off-road vehicle and a race car. And Night Runner sounds closer to a jet engine. Thank you.
She's pretty nice. Yeah, we got in like a half, almost full knot. Captain wants more. But uh, we're going eight knots. Yeah. Big old stern berth like this, you yeah. get your leg off when you're sailing. Like, it's, no, it's, oh there's God. nothing more comfortable than that stern yeah. open bench. I don't love some anything so much. Too, and some like, shade, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. The speedometer reads seven, and the anemometer is reading nine. Seven knots in nine knots of wind. A little better? Seven knots and nine knots of wind. <laughs> it is awesome. Coming about. Helms will leave. gained some wind on the return to La Cruz. classic lines, like us, you'll enjoy this drive-by of the Mariner 32. Absolutely adorable. Oh, this is awesome. I, mean, I'm I know. Years. <laughs> <laughs> Since but you guys, work, you guys. I know. Oh, yeah? I did so. Oh, my goodness. That was like two years ago. Oh. I need to feel so bad. Yeah. So what? Awesome. 
What a great late afternoon sail. I oh, couldn't have asked for better. Line ready, boss? Line ready. We got the deck nice and washed down today on our sail. Back to Red Aviva's storyline. Good news, we're on the books. Our haul out's for May 14th, and it's only getting hotter every day. We definitely did not intend to go this long without a haul out. We got a local diver to evict the marine life attached to our haul. With a modest air compressor, he jumped overboard, and in about three hours, Red Aviva was clear, solving our transmission hiccup. Now we wait in anticipation, ready for our long overdue haul out. Bottom paint only lasts for so long, and in these warm waters, growth is unavoidable. The struggle is shared by every boat down here. We're happy to have a diver take care of this overgrown garden. And thanks to Alex for lending us his generator for the task. I can't wait to give this girl some love. Our anchor has not been up in quite a while. Things here in La Cruz grow very, very, very fast. Got a haul out coming up. Bottom's clean now, and uh, that's all good. But the chain is just a solid ball of disgustingness. <laughs> it should only be bad where like from the water down to the ground, but everything that's kind of sweeping along the floor should be fine. So what I'm gonna do just in anticipation for pulling the anchor chain up just so it's not so gnarly when I do it, it's probably still gonna be gross, but hopefully to help that out a little bit, I'm just gonna drop a bunch of extra chain because the anchor just cleared out quite a bit. There's nobody really next to us, so we can have plenty of swing room. So I'm just gonna drop a bunch of chain down and let that part of the section of the chain that's all fouled up, just let that kind of drag across the ground a bunch of times over in the next few days and hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll make it at least more manageable to deal with. So gnarly. Garrett cuts our snubber line free. And reattaches it with a fresh end. state of the anchorage here in La Cruz every afternoon seemingly more and more so as we get closer to summer the warmer it gets <laughs> it's uh, quite the bash out here the wind builds up every afternoon and you just have all the fetch from all of Banderas Bay and the boats just start bouncing up and down some a lot worse than others but our friends uh, on spy Aaron and Allie, they're right next to us and they are going for a ride. This close to filming in real time and in limbo until our haul out, our week hasn't been very eventful. 
A lot of boring planning goes on behind the scenes and a lot of ups and downs figuring out what's next. It's actually better when the wind is up because sometimes in the, uh, oh, there's spy goes again, <laughs> man. Uh, sometimes in the evenings, like in that transition period when the wind dies, because the wind usually dies down really quick, and then the fetch takes a little bit longer to die down, and if we turn broadside to it, then everything is a washing machine. That's much worse. In the calm of the evening, the sound of the town celebration carries across the water. This nine-day party begins every day with a procession to the church and a series of bottle rockets. Every day commemorates something different, honoring the patron saint of La Cruz, culminating on the last day with the most impressive fireworks display I've ever seen. If that wasn't impressive enough, wait till they light this tower. There are many stages to this tower. Just when you think you've seen enough, the next series goes ablaze. Cruise is upstaged by a butterfly, then a rocket, the cruise has welcomed us and given us some much needed fun. Our time here has brought a lot of things to light. We've been wrestling with a few things and have gained some insight. Our direction isn't clear, but we're in this together, and you're coming too. Wherever our path leads, in the big picture, it's an adventure. And thanks for watching.